we're going to be talking about how you go through the anatomy and the uh, palpations of the lower leg and ankle. And just so you know, in, in a lot of texts, they kind of separate these two different groups out and sometimes they put them together. And then what you'll also find is a lot of this overlaps with the foot. And so um, as we talk about these things, just understand that they're not just isolated to one body part. And where we're gonna start first, tibia, biggest bone of your lower leg, all of your weight goes through this leg and you should be able to palpate the really nice and superficial part of the tibia on that medial aspect of the lower leg where really there isn't a lot of tissue that goes over the top of it. It's basically skin and then the bone directly underneath. And from there, and you should be able to palpate, remember in the knee, we talked about the tibial tuberosity and all of the su uh, super, uh, no, superior aspects of that bone. And then it comes all the way down and ends down here at the ankle, and it is the superior and medial portion of the talocrural joint, which we'll talk about just in a little bit for the ankle. But the tibia is our biggest bone of our lower leg, and it's very important that we know this. If you have a true fracture of this bone, um, you are going to know it probably like your leg is bent at a 90 degree angle or twisted or something, and they will not be walking on this. So knowing where your tibia is, is very important. The other one that was spoken a little bit with the knee is the fibula. The fibula, remember we always talk about orientation and how can you tell where you're at. The fibula is always on the lateral side. I don't care if you're looking at the anterior aspect or the posterior aspect. If you can't see it at all, you're looking at the medial side of their lower leg. But the fibula is always on the lateral side. And again, if you come from the joint line and come just downwards or inferiorly, in the center of their lower leg is where you should be able to find their fibular head. This is a really important location for you guys to be able to find one because we talked about how your LCL attaches to that, but also you can have fractures of your fibular head um, and there's a lot of other stuff that can happen. And so then your fibula runs down this lateral aspect and you should be able to feel the fibula that comes all the way down and it becomes your lateral malleolus, which is this protrusion on the lateral aspect of your ankle. And if you notice, if you compare the lengths of the medial malleolus to the lateral malleolus, the lateral malleolus hangs lower than the medial malleolus. And when we talk about ankle range of motion and injuries, that's gonna be a really important thing for you guys to remember that you have two malleoli, a medial that is part of your tibia and a lateral that is uh, the distal extension of your fibula and they are not the same length lateral is longer than your medial and and you guys need to know that so then from these things if we're going to continue on with the bones as we come down to the ankle right at the distal aspect of your tail or of your tibia is your talus and that is the inferior portion of your talocrural joint and so as you bring the person up and down in a dorsiflexion and plantar flexion you should be able to feel that talus move underneath your finger right there. And then the other bone that's really going to be important when we talk about ankle stuff is the calcaneus, also known as your heel bone, um, because when we're gonna talk about the ankle ligaments, these are bones that those ligaments uh, are going to insert upon. The other ligament, or not ligament, but two more joints that you need to know are your subtalar joint. So sub means below, and it's called subtalar. So that means that the joint has to be below the talus, and the only bone that is inferior to the talus is the calcaneus. So your subtalar joint, if you find the talus and you find the calcaneus, you should be able to palpate a joint in between those two things. And it's really easiest to do, um, for me anyway, inferior to the distal aspect of your lateral malleolus, but that is your subtalar joint. And you actually have ligaments that sit inside that joint, um, and there can be quite a bit of motion that occurs there. And we talk about pronation and supination. Those are some of the motions that are going to occur there. The other joint that we haven't spoken about yet, and it's a structure slash joint slash, there's lots of ways to talk about it, is um, a structure that has two different names, you need to know both names, that run between the tibia and the fibula. And so 
there is a very dense structure, very much like fascia, that connects these from the inferior portion of them to the superior portion of them. And the two names are your syndesmosis or your interosseous membrane. And they're pierced by nerves and arteries and uh, veins. And it's really, really important though because it holds these guys together and it allows them to move because as you walk, they need to shift and spread out. If she goes from seated to standing, when she stands on it, your tibia and your fibula actually separate out a little bit. So those structures are put on tension. And then when we talk about that, if people get something, and we'll talk later about high ankle sprains, if they get a high ankle sprain, they can actually have shooting pain that goes up as high as that structure is damaged. Now you have other structures, four ligaments actually, that support this structure, the syndesmosis or the interosseous membrane. And the thing to think about is the tibia and fibula come together at your ankle, so distally, but they also come together up here near your knee, so superiorly. And you have two ligaments, superior, and two inferior ligaments that are going to hold it together. And when we talk about superior and inferior, if I say superior, then you know we have to have inferior because what's the point of saying superior, right? And then on the we have an anterior and a posterior. So when we talk about these ligaments, if we put them into their full name, this is your anterior superior tibiofibular ligament. And then if you go on the posterior side of the fibula, this is your posterior superior tibiofibular ligament. So there's four letters in that acronym, the ASTF and the PSTF. Now, if we have superiors, that means we have inferiors. So again, you would find the distal end of the tibia, not past that, so not all the way down here in what most people would consider their ankle, it's gonna be above that. And so if they're tibiofibular ligaments, they actually have to be connected to the tibia and the fibula, right? So down here, we're gonna have the anterior inferior tibiofibular, and then on the posterior side, the posterior inferior tibiofibular ligaments. So the AITF and the PITF. So there are four ligaments in total that hold these two bones together. In addition to that, we have that really big, strong interosseous membrane or syndesmosis. So there's really five total structures that hold these together. And that's really important because all of our body weight goes through here. And like I said, when you're weight bearing on it, it's gonna separate those bones apart. So you need all of those structures to hold that stuff together because the forces can get eight, even 10 times your body weight when you're running and jumping and doing stuff like that. So those are really important structures for you guys to know when we're thinking about just the general initial anatomy of what's going on here in the lower leg. For the ankle, when we talk about our ligaments, what you're going to see is we have three lateral ligaments. So if I say LAS, lateral ankle sprain, we're talking about these three ligaments that sit on the lateral side. They do not include the tibiofibular ligaments at all. They are completely separate and they are down here actually in what most people would consider the ankle joint. So we talked about the talus and what you would do, they all come off the fibula. The first one is going to be the anterior talofibular ligament. So ATF, it is the most commonly injured ligament of your ankle. And what you would do is put them kind of in neutral, find that distal anterior aspect of your fibula, and then find your talus and go in between them. And if you put them into an inversion plantar flex kind of position, you would feel it go tight underneath your finger. So that is, the most commonly injured ligament in your ankle. The next one is your calcaneofibular ligament, and it comes off the very distal portion of your calcaneus and then runs in an inferior and anterior direction onto your calcaneus. So same thing, this one is hurt just with straight inversion. So you would find that distal part and then kind of run a line from one to the other. Let's go like this so they can kind of see better. So notice it's not straight inferior. It doesn't go straight down. You can kind of see how we come forward and it's gonna run right through here. 
and we do have some tendons that run in that same area you can kind of see them getting tight right there the ligament is going to run just deep to those and then we have the posterior talofibular ligament the ptf and that comes again from the distal posterior aspect of the fibula to the talus. So remember the calcaneus is way down here. That means that the talus is going to be much higher than that. So don't be palpating way down here. You gotta be up here. This is the least likely of the three lateral ankle ligaments to get hurt. And you usually have a pretty big mechanism when you actually cause injury to that. And that one can get hurt with both plantar flexion inversion or just straight inversion when those things happen. But you definitely need to know those. And those are the three lateral ankle ligaments. Then conversely, on the medial side of your ankle, you have a really, really big, thick uh, ligament called the deltoid. And it's called the deltoid because it's shaped like a triangle. And it's actually comprised of four different ligaments, but it runs off the medial malleolus and runs posterior and inferior and anterior and inferior and then comes across so you have this massive structure on the medial aspect of your ankle and it is very very strong and so if we put this ligament along with your fibula being lower than the other side these two things together prevent us from going into eversion very much but if we hurt this ligament it's typically an eversion type of mechanism that's going to hurt that guy but again very strong and getting deltoid sprains is not super common, okay?